for the Planning and Land Use Management Committee. I've been joined by the Honorable Council Members Mitchell Englander and Council Member Jose Rusar. Uh, we have five items on today's agenda. Uh, our director will not be providing a report today. We always appreciate his presence. Um, the first three items are related, so we're going to take those, at least the first two together, then the third one. Um, we have item number four, and I believe on four, did we already close public comment on four? We did, okay. We did. So before we launch into the agenda, I just want to remind everyone that uh, there is a clock comment. in front of you. Is it on, Madam we Clerk? Public comment the clock, is it on? Yeah, last time, didn't we? I don't know. We have a yeah, clock that essentially allows you to pace yourself in your comments. Many of you have written eloquent letters. I don't know if you timed it to one minute or not, but if you want to get to your point, we would very much appreciate that you do. If the person before you made all the points you wanted to make, it's okay to say I agree with the previous speaker and give us anything new and or different. But hearing the same thing over and over again is kind of like no attraction. Um, also, you know, the acoustics are terrible in this room. So if you have a conversation, please take it outside. We would appreciate that very much. So give us your name and address. Keep an eye on the clock. Um, on, on items one and two, we'll put those together. We read those into the record, Roberto, and we'll have a one minute comment on those items. Okay, item one, council members, is a motion by Corrette Wesson. Oh, okay. It's requesting the city attorney. Wait, oh, I'm sorry, Roberto. I, I kind of jumped the gun. Only because number four, is we're revisiting the four, maybe we can move that, that way folks aren't waiting. Um, and um, want to read number four into the record? Sure. Uh, item four, council members, is an appeal by uh, Balubai Patel and uh, Pulinara Arellano. They're being represented by Mr. Frank Weiser. Uh, this is an appeal relative to a zoning administrator uh, determination that the Travelers Hotel is a public nuisance located in CD14. Now, there was extensive discussion on this item when it last appeared before this committee, and I believe the council member continued it for today. And council member, if you would like to tell us where we're at on item number four. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And as you recall, this item was before us last week when we discussed a hotel that um, the operators had appealed some conditions that were imposed in the discussion. We raised the issue that they had not fulfilled any other conditions that were imposed upon them. Primarily, they have not ever filed their plan approvals as required by the city. They have not met with LAPD as required within their conditions. They have not maintained security on premises or even done the smallest things like enforcing key deposit by tenants as they leave the building or take a fingerprint with no photo ID, when no photo ID is presented. Um, so my question at the previous hearing, given that what was only before us at that time, or at least we thought was either the approval or denial of the appeal, my question was, should we revoke uh, their right to operate or grant, revoke the grant privileges that we've given them in the past. Uh, and my concern was that they have shown complete disregard for any of the conditions that the city has imposed. There have been a number of police calls to the area. Uh, we had testimony from nearby school called Paralos Niños who have testified to some of the criminal activity that continues to go on at those premises. Uh, we also had several other others testify as to the criminal activity that continues to go on. Um, so at this point, um, if I could ask the zoning administrator some questions and um, see where we're at. And if the city attorney would like to uh, 
come in and any intercede at any time. So have we confirmed whether we can or cannot revoke at this time? Is that under the jurisdiction of this committee? That's correct. The city council has the authority to discontinue or revoke the land use. We can at this yes, time. The way it's been noticed. We're essentially sitting in the, in the zoning administrator's shoes, mm -hmm. and so the same issues that were before the zoning administrator are also before the city council. Okay. Terry Kaufman, Macias City Attorney's Office. So the, the appeal was an appeal from the entire decision of the zoning administrator, and the zoning administrator did two things, and one of which was he made a finding that at that time that there, were insufficient, there was insufficient cause to revoke. So that's in front of you as well. You do have to make the findings under 1227.1c to A and B, which is prior government, which are prior governmental efforts to cause the owner or operator to eliminate the problems associated with the land use or discretionary zoning approval have failed, and you have to cite specific examples of that, and that the owner or operator has failed to demonstrate to the satisfaction of the director the willingness or ability to eliminate the problems associated with the land use or discretionary zoning approval. Thank you. And we've drafted some um, findings to that effect. Uh, I think they've been passed around. Have they been passed around? Do we have them? I don't know that everybody has. Do you have extra copies? Okay. I think the zoning minister has some. Can you get some to the committee members as well, please? Yeah. Uh, we've drafted some to make those findings. Now, I mentioned at the last hearing that I've been on this committee for about six years, and I haven't come across a case where there's just utter and complete disregard for any of the conditions. I've seen some cases where people have attempted to comply. You know, here it didn't appear from the record that they met at all or attempted to meet with LAPD as required. Uh, even the simple thing that's finding a plan check uh, a plan approval, I mean, that is just, hey, we're here, we're trying to comply. I mean, it's just, they've been absent. Um, so that's why, instead of us at the last hearing agreeing whether we should agree or disagree with the, with the appeal, I suggested we revoke. Now, um, I understand that uh, this is a serious action to take, but I, I don't think this leaves us any other um, alternative at this time. Uh, I think that if you compare these two other cases that have come before this body, there have been more reasons why we've revoked. Uh, and I think we have to take them in totality to look at effort, to look at attempt to comply. Uh, and here there's just been no attempt to comply whatsoever. Um, so, Mr. Chair, I don't know if there's speakers in terms of, uh, we do have a, a senior lead officer for the area who's here, I understand. I know we closed the pub public hearing, but if, uh, uh, I think uh, if we could hear from our senior lead officer for the area, that would help clarify some of the record. Well, we do have two cards that state support, and um, one is a property owner, or representative for the property owner. So you have two cards. You want to give them a minute each, sure. and then go with the police. So then you, Terry Kaufman, Macias, you need to reopen, move to reopen the public hearing for however long you want to do it. Can, since you already had a full hearing, you can do it for a short period of time if that's your choice. Okay. Um, and then let those people speak. I, I also wanted to point out that if you are going towards revocation, you need to add to your decision the provisions that are set forth in LAMC, Los Angeles Municipal Code, Section 1227.1D, 2A through G, and those relate to um, uh, displacement of tenants, because it's my understanding this is a, a residential hotel and it sets forth certain obligations and requirements for the housing department. Okay. And you should also reference, um, in summary, the findings um, that you have, if, if they're to be the findings of the committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So given the uh, ability to revoke, I'm sure the council will follow through with your instructions. Uh, do you, you didn't want to allow a minute each to each speaker, Councilman? 
Yes, that's okay. We'll do that. Um, and we'll move that quickly. <clears throat> Just as a side, I want to thank Councilman Roberto Rosendahl who's here with us. Councilman, we're dealing with item number four right now, but we'll get to the first three items as soon as we're done with this. But thank you for joining us, sir. Okay, the two cards we have is a Frank A. Weirin, I believe. Come on up, sir. You have one minute. And then we have Kevin E. N. Key, and as the city attorney that has advised, yes, public uh, comment was closed. Out of courtesy, we're opening it for one minute. Yes, Frank Please. Wojner on behalf of the uh, property owner. I just wanted to object to, uh, I don't believe there's a, a jurisdiction in this body. Um, assuming arguendo that the uh, uh, committee is correct, that there has been this uh, so-called total disregard of the conditions, that was to be brought up before the zoning administrator, there was 15 days, I believe, to appeal. The city did not appeal. Uh, no one else appealed from the public, and I believe that there is administrative collateral estoppel as a matter of law. I would uh, refer you to a case called uh, City of Torrance versus Break Zone Billiards. In that case, a city councilman uh, did appeal a decision uh, to uh, not revoke a conditional use permit. Uh, but the Second District Court of Appeal found that since the councilman had appealed, there was standing. Without an appeal by the city, um, I find this uh, more than unusual. I don't believe you have jurisdiction. I'm going to object on those grounds. Um, the zoning administrator stood before this body. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Kevin M. Key. Very quickly, I, I do have a legal background, so I understand exhaustion of remedies. I also think there's a common sense exhaustion of patients. We, the people of Central City, Los Angeles, deserve better than what we've been getting with respect to this particular property. Um, our organization, United Coalition East Prevention Project, was initially involved in this back, I think, 1999. Um, we haven't seen significant progress make. We are concerned about displacement and dislocation of the tenants. I think in the letter that I've submitted that there's at least some possibility of finding a way that a better suited organization that will be in compliance. We do find that the ownership that they're in compliance with the conditions generally make it better for all. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Right under a minute. That's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, we have, uh, I believe it's Stella Lopez. And then we're out with our, finally with our officer, Jack Rector. Very quickly, thank you very much for reopening the public hearing and for giving me an opportunity. Estella Lopez, Executive Director of the Central City East Association. Um, I just want to let you know, since the last time that we were here in this room, uh, our security conducted, the Business Improvement District security conducted 42 patrols at this location. Not once during those 42 patrols from last week to today was there a security present at the hotel. What we did observe were 12 acts of prostitution in front of or going in and out of the hotel. So I have the reports from our security, and I will turn them in. But I thought it was important for you to know that. And Mr. Wiesar, thank you very much for your leadership on this issue. We really appreciate it. Thank you. OK. We do have, I'm sorry, Officer, one more before you speak. Martin Singer. Just one more. Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm the president and CEO of Para Los Niños, and I just want to thank personally uh, Council Member Wizar for taking the action that he's taken. Um, as we said last week, we have hundreds of children, most of them under the age of five, um, adjacent to the Travelers Hotel, and it's just been uh, a, a terrible, terrible, terrible experience for the children and their families to witness the goings on, the filth, the squalor. And it is a safe school zone, and uh, we're just very, very grateful that the city has taken action. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, officer. There you go. Good afternoon. I'm Officer Richter. I'm the senior lead officer for that area of uh, the Arts District, uh, Little Tokyo, and uh, the eastern part of Skid Row. You know, no doubt about that. This is, as we all know, a, a very difficult uh, location. 
Um, we did some research, and within that two-block area, with just in the year to date, um, I've come up with uh, 189 calls for service for the police department. That's within two blocks of that location. Uh, seven Part 1 reported crimes within that area, and then three specific calls to that location itself. But I think what's really telling to me is that even though we've had a long history of problems at that specific location, and as the councilman has, has already uh, mentioned, I don't see any effort being brought forth as to an improvement in the area. As recent as the 17th of this month, my vice uh, officers from Central uh, responded to the location and they cited them for 1227.1. It was a violation of their uh, regulations and they found that their, their key system was incorrect, their registration was incorrect, and once again there was no uh, security guard on that location. And I can tell you that from working downtown in 10 years, I myself and I've been on radio calls there over the years. I've never seen a security guard at that location. So it's, it's a difficult uh, at best, and uh, I don't see any effort coming forward on the owners or the management themselves. Thank you, Officer Director, for all your hard work. Yes, and, sir. Uh, your service to the city. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that essentially is public comment. Uh, do you have the uh, instructions you'd like to? Sure, thank you. And before I make a motion, I'd like to just ask the question that, or make the comment that, should we plop this hotel out of its current location and put it anywhere else in the city? This certainly won't be tolerated. Not a small percentage of what's tolerated here. I don't know what has happened in the city that we've allowed it to get this point to this point where over 13 years have happened and none of the conditions have been enforced. It gets appalling. And um, whether it is in Skid Row or any other part of the city, none of this should be tolerated, particularly if it's near a school. So, um, Mr. Chair, I ask that uh, we adopt the findings as proposed to revoke and that we also adopt this pursuant to the code that our city attorney read, 1227.1 D2A through G. I know that will initiate some uh, LAHD obligations on the operator, uh, possible relocation benefits and other items, but at this time, uh, I think that is the, the appropriate thing to do and also so that we don't allow other hotels to also see that if this hotel could get away with it, so can they too. Okay, now I'll second that uh, directive, Councilman. That's unanimous. So uh, based on that directive, we will take the necessary steps to revoke. And deny the appeal. And deny the appeal. So that'll be the action of this committee. Thank you all for coming here on that item number four. Uh, we do now have items one and two in front of us. Uh, is Councilman Rosendahl still here? Sir, I'd like to offer you the courtesy to speak first. Um, but as you come up, can you read into the uh, record items one and two, Roberto? Uh, sure. Item one, council members, is a correct Western motion instructing city attorney to report relative to a limited immunity ordinance approach to regulate medical marijuana businesses. Uh, the file has also been referred to Public Safety Committee. Item two is a proposed ordinance by the Director of Planning, uh, approved by the Planning Commission last week. It's in response to a motion Wizard Englander and a motion Parks Perry, and it's basically uh, repeat, repeating sections of the Municipal Code and uh, banning medical marijuana in the city. Thank you. Councilor Rosendahl. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and colleagues. Uh, I came down here because I happened to be upstairs at this point, and I thought it was important to go on the record. Look, it is out of control in this town. I don't know. I've heard anywhere from 400 pot shops to 1,400. God knows how many they are. And, uh, colleagues, uh, I don't like them proliferating all over the place like there's no tomorrow. I have an issue with it on Venice Beach. Uh, you have these hucksters out there just trying to get people to buy pot. They come from all over the world. I'd like to close them down on Venice Beach. But the only way we can effectively deal with this operation is respect those that have been grandfathered within a process that have 
located themselves in an area that does not put them in direct contact with parks or kids, and that they also are taxed. If we can do that, and, and I think there's about 100 that feel within, full within that, that kind of criteria, it would at least keep it from the back alleys for those in medicinal needs that need it. Uh, look, the, the Mexican cartel is already destroying their own country and our own. Uh, it should be brought into the light and be made effective and safe. When you look at some of the people that, that are walking around uh, with one form or another of a disease and they find that marijuana is something that helps, they should be given that opportunity to get the marijuana. But right now it's out of control. And to ban it, which would be totally insane, it would throw it right back into the back alleys that make no sense to do it. We'd have our police spending more time on issues that many of us feel uh, don't require that kind, or just go tour the prisons and see all these young people in there whose lives have been destroyed. So I appeal to, to my colleagues to go with the Wesson Caretz or Caretz Wesson, however it is, that does respect those groups that went through a process here in the city that we put in place. It's not perfect, but it's certainly better than banning it and playing big shot about it as we destroy more people's lives and cause more frustration among our police and among our regular citizenry. I have said historically, and it really hasn't gone anywhere, which each council member should be able to deal with the land use issues of it. I've had people who come to my door and say, Bill, we don't want it here, and I would look in the neighborhood and say, that's right, let's shut it down there. We want to make it so that we all participate, but to get rid of them all, in my opinion, it's throwing out the baby with the bat water and will cause us more problems. Thank you, colleagues, for listening to me. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you for your passion and thank you for coming down here and giving us your point of view. Um, <laughs> so, colleagues, I, we can have the staff come on up and give us a briefing and a summary of items one and two. Or we can start moving right into public comment. We have several cards, both opposing and supporting. Uh, it's up to you. We'd like the summary from the staff. Are you guys okay? Okay, let's move into public comment then. Uh, it's already read to the record. Uh, we're moving to public comment now, Charlie. So that being said, uh, this is items one and two. And uh, some of you might have written a card twice for each item. So we're asking you to speak once for both items one and two. They're coming together. So we'll start. No, no. So we're going to move forward to public comment. And uh, we'll start with Lisa Sarkin and then Michael Larson. Hard to speak on these two issues together. Um, Okay, Lisa Sarkin, I'm with the Studio City Neighborhood Council, Vice President, Chair of the Land Use Committee, but I'm here speaking for myself because our neighborhood can't decide what to do. Personally, we have, I think there's way too many medical marijuana dispensaries in Studio City. We have 13 of them. They're in a three mile by three and a half mile area. There, I don't believe a single one of them are operating properly because no sale of marijuana is allowed. That's something that everybody seems to forget. I totally believe that, contrary, I mean, with the state voting for medical marijuana dispensaries to be available and med medical marijuana to be available, it should be available. But 13 in three miles is ridiculous. They're within 600, mile, 600 feet of schools. They're very close to each other. In one block, we have four dispensaries. That's, that's being said. For, for the corrects, I don't see how it'll ever be enforced. Nothing's being enforced now. I have a lot more I could say, but one minute doesn't give me much time. Sorry, ma'am. Thank you. So we have uh, Michael Larson. Good afternoon, council members. Um, I'm from the Eagle Rock Neighborhood Council. I'm the president. And today I'm here uh, to speak on behalf of the council to say that we are in support of the ban, uh, the temporary ban, until the California Supreme Court can clarify the regulations and the rules. We are in support of the use of med medical marijuana and the ideas behind it. But we believe that the situation in Los Angeles is out of control and the only responsible thing to do is to institute the temporary ban 
until the uh, Supreme Court can figure all of this out. Um, I understand, on a personal level, I understand what uh, uh, Mr. Koretz is talking about with his motion. Uh, the only problem is we've been down that road already, and we've seen what it does. We have an ordinance that this council has created, and it has been hamstrung and uh, uh, not ever put into effect because of lawsuits, which will occur if his motion goes forward. Can I ask a Thank question, you. Mr. Chair? Sure. Mr. Larson, you said you're from the Eagle Rock Neighborhood Council? That's correct. In Eagle Rock, you're bordered by the cities of Glendale and Pasadena. Is that correct? On That's both right. sides? That's right. And they have both banned medical marijuana dispensaries, yep. not medical marijuana. This is the proposed ordinance is for a ban on dispensaries, not on medical marijuana. But um, and how many dispensaries do you think there are in Eagle Rock right now? Um, right now, we we have about ten. About ten within okay. a two point three, two point four mile radius. Okay, so we have a community in Los Angeles bordered both sides who have banned dispensaries, and there are ten in that small community. That's that's okay, correct. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next uh, speaker is David Lozano, and I believe it's Desi Kenty. I can't read the first name, but David okay. Lozama, at C A N T E E. I'm sorry, David Lizama, L I Z A M A. Yes. Okay, that's me. Okay, then we have Kenty, uh, C A N T. Come on up. Let's put you up in the batter's box here. Thank you. Ah. Uh, Medical marijuana is a right. It's a civil right. And what is being proposed in this ban is nothing but less than enactment of Jim Crow laws, outrageous barriers that are specifically designed to disenfranchise people from their God-given right. What the speaker before me failed to mention, that an Eagle Rock is one of the few dispensaries Cornerstone Research Collective that offers its patients the high CBD strains that I need to alleviate my osteoarthritis that I was just diagnosed with. I will never have the expertise, Weezer, are to grow this medicine. I've been looking online. It takes years of experience, and your band basically says I need to suffer. That is what it's designed, and everyone knows it. No patient is, has their eyes covered. This ban that you are proposing is designed to make patients suffer. Thank you, sir. I, I'm sorry, before I say, this is a process where I would like to ask you to not direct a comment to any one specific council member. This is a committee. I know it's a very emotional issue, but it continues to clap and carry on is not going to allow us to get through this session. So please hold your applause, hold your clapping. We understand how you feel, but let's move on this process. So thank you very much. Please move forward. I'm Jay Kuti, Central Hollywood. I'm a medical cannabis patient and patient advocate, have been for at least 20 years. I'm also the executive director of the Patient Advocacy Network. We're currently working with an average of about 50,000 patients here in greater Los Angeles. Uh, what I can tell you is that none of them support a ban, not a gentle ban, not a hardcore ban, not a softcore ban, not a menage ban, or whatever it is you guys are trying to put forward here. What they support are good working regulations, and that's what we should be doing. The reason that you have people saying that this is out of control, this isn't the patient's fault, this is the council's fault. This is the council's inability to put forth an enforceable uh, set of regulations, and that's what we should be discussing. Not a ban. Thank you. Ask a question, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, would you mind if I ask you a question? Okay. This is. Um, I would like to. Uh, if no one would like to have an honest discussion about medical marijuana and have a question and answer period, that's fine with me. But the fact is that the city of Los Angeles. The comment was made that we have failed to put forward a ordinance that works. The fact of the matter is that we have a poorly written state law. It makes it nearly impossible for any municipality to put forward a ordinance that makes sense. Okay. I think we have a very loosely worded state law that practically anyone could get a recommendation for any illness that has 
we need that to has allowed us to be in a place where at that, no matter what we try, no matter what we do, until the state law is fixed, this city or in any other city is not going to be able to protect residents from the proliferation of dispensaries Constable, and people having comment? access to this. I understand what you're doing, but uh, Brown Act doesn't allow us to have this kind of dialogue with the city council. That is not what I'm doing here. Mr. Chair, let me correct that. As a committee member of this, I could speak at any time I wish, unless I, if I am recognized by the chair. That's the one courtesy I do follow by. If it, the chair recognizes me to speak, I will speak. But one of the things about this dialogue is that I'm a correct speaker as they make points that may not be accurate or that we don't have a chance to respond in the way, in the fashion they're putting it forward to this. To I the appreciate point. what you're saying. Believe me, I've been in this committee as long as you have, working these issues as long as you have. I understand your frustration. We want to get to this committee. We have a lot of cards, and I believe we cannot be in a dialogue uh, with our speakers. If I'm correct, Madam Attorney? Terry Kaufman, Macias. This is the time for public comment, and the committee members will have time for their comments after people finish speaking, and then you can discuss away. Right. So thank you, and I appreciate your patience, sir. Okay, Doug Mons and Eva Allen. Good afternoon. My name is Doug Haynes. I'm with East Hollywood Neighborhood Council, and I've spoken for three years on this issue before this committee and before the City Council, and also I spoke before the City Planning Commission. And just to be real quick on uh, remembrance of why I brought up this issue, we have a dispensary that's been open for a number of years right next to single family homes. And for all those years, I've been trying to get that dispensary shut down. And imagine what it's like to own a home. Your property value is, is worthless. All day and all night, the marijuana blows into these people's houses. They've been asking me for years, what is the city going to do for us? And as a neighborhood council, we unanimously support the ban, and we do so for our community. And I've heard all the arguments over all those years. This ban will not stop anything. What it will do, though, is it gives the LAPD, which has been telling us for years they have no direction from the city council, some direction. And that's all we seek. It's merely a tool. It will not shut down all dispensaries. It will start the process, and that's all we ask for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Eva Allen. Good afternoon, Council. Um, my name is Eila Ali'i. I live and work in Eagle Rock. Um, I am a UFCW Local 770 member and a patient consultant at Cornerstone Research in Eagle Rock. Um, I'm here urging you to support the Credits West in Motion, the limited immunity approach, um, I feel is the most responsible policy. Medical cannabis workers in Los Angeles have formed an organizing committee to fight for our jobs at good, responsible dispensaries. We resent being lumped in with the countless other dispensaries that have popped up throughout the city. We are not organizing uh, those bad apples. Cornerstone sets itself ap apart by operating a research-oriented medical cannabis dispensary that supports research into the efficacy of various strains of cannabis for different ailments. We keep meticulous records of the effects and benefits of the medicine we dispense as part of our ongoing commitment to providing the safest and most effective patient care. A gentle band will spell the end of my job of three years at Cornerstone Research and threatens dire consequences for the many seriously ill patients that I help. Thank you, ma'am. David Stein and Aaron Larkin. David Stein and Aaron Larkin, I believe. Okay, Aaron Larkin. Aaron, I just come up, Don Lewis and Aaron Taylor. Good afternoon, honor honorable members of the Planning and Land Use Management Committee. I just have one simple question. If we don't have medical marijuana in dispensaries, where is it going to be located? It's going to be in people's houses. Under the general ban, people can only cultivate in dwelling units, which are apartments and houses. As a resident of the city of LA, you know, I don't want 20 people in my building cultivating medical marijuana unless they're experienced, they know what they're doing, and they're not presenting a danger to the other people in the neighborhood who are around. In addition, 
we've heard for years how we need to move medical marijuana away from neighborhoods, but all we're doing is putting it deeper and deeper into it. That's not the solution. In addition, under the general ban, it, authorize, it authorizes cultivating in any dwelling, which is, which is in contradiction to state law, which says you have to be away from 600 feet away from schools. It'll draw more crime into the neighborhoods. It's not what the people of LA want. Keep dispensaries. Thank you very much. Next speakers, Don Lewis and Ann Taylor. You're welcome to come to the microphone. I'll call your name. Mr. Chair, just for the record, the commentator said that we should keep dispensaries. Nowhere in the state law does it permit the city of Los Angeles to keep dispensaries. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Council. My name is Don Lewis. I'm a patient and also a resident of Highland Park for the past 20 years. I am, I'm not asking, I'm begging you to not do a gentle ban. It's not gentle. For people like me, I have MS. I live in pain. I will be forced to go, I don't know where. If you, I'm going to give my money to the cartels. I'm going to give it to the street corners. I'm not going to get to go to where I go now, Cornerstone, which deals with me as a patient, has knowledgeable people, has even made themselves unions so you can keep track of them. They are responsible, and there are groups that are responsible. I beg of you to think of it as a medical issue that will affect both the city, um, the patients, and I can't even say it will affect jobs. I would like you to think about it as a medical issue and not just as a legal problem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ann Taylor? Good afternoon. My name is Erin Taylor, and I'm an office assistant at Venice Beach Care Center in Venice. I'm also a student at Santa Monica Community College. I've been a member of UCFW Local 770 for a few months now. I'm appearing before this committee to urge you to support the Corrette and Wesson motion. Their limited immunity approach strikes a fair compromise between the status quo and the storefront medical cannabis dispensary ban. My coworkers and I have joined the UFCW Local 770 to protect and stabilize the good jobs that responsible dispensaries like Venice Beach Care Center and Venice can provide. The gentle ban on storefront dispensaries threatens my job and our patients, my ability to pay for college. I love my job in Venice Beach Care Center very much, and I love my patients and my coworkers. For our patients, for our cities, and our jobs, please support the Corrette's Wesson Limited Immunity Motion. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. William Lee. William Lee. William Lee. Is this coming up, Adam Daniels and Chris Horn? Come on up. You can line up behind the microphone, please. Um, the, the people of California enacted the Compassionate Act of 1996, known as Prop 215, over 15 years ago, and mandated that Californians have the right to obtain and use marijuana. The act encouraged government to implement a plan to provide for safe and affordable distribution. In 2003, the California legislation enacted the Medical Marijuana Program Act to further implement the voters' intent to enhance the access of patients and caregivers. The California Court of Appeals has acknowledged that Medical Marijuana Program Act contemplates the formation and operation of medical marijuana co uh, cooperatives that would receive reimbursements for marijuana and services provided in conjunction with marijuana. Mr. Wiesar's uh, proposed ordinance is an unconstitutional modification of the Compassionate Use Act and the Medical Marijuana Program Act as it will unlawfully limit access to medical marijuana to those in need. The city has repeatedly said it wants to end litigation. If you enact this proposed ban, you will complete opposite effect. There will be more costly litigation, and the people and the voters won't stand for it. Thank you, Mr. Wiesar. Well, we are moving, correct? Yeah. Okay. Hey, guys. You're much more intimidating this close to say it on the other end. 
My name is Adam Daniels, and I am a UFCW Local 770 member. I am currently employed as a patient consultant at LA Wonderland. I've worked in the Los Angeles cannabis industry for six years. I'm speaking here today to urge you to support the Corrects West in motion. Their limited immunity approach is the most responsible way to regulate medical cannabis in our city. My coworkers and I are hardworking Americans that deserve the same benefits and protections as many other hardworking Americans, and we take our responsibilities as patient consultants very seriously and work hard to make sure patients have safe access to medication. The gentle ban approach will be anything but for my coworkers and I who are threatened with the loss of our jobs and our livelihoods. The Credit Express Unlimited Immunity Approach is responsible regulatory policy that protects good union jobs, provides for safe access for patients, and allows responsible operators to contribute toward a healthy Los Angeles economy. Thank you for your time. Please support the Credit Express in the motion today. Thank you, Chris Warren. Chris over here. If I call your name, please come to the microphone. Alex Martin and Mary, I think it's Solis. Solis. Okay, please come up to the microphone. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Chris Horn, and I am a UFC W77 member working as a patient and consultant at Downtown Collective. I stand before you respectfully to urge your support for the Corets and Wesson motion. Their limited immunity approach strikes a fair compromise between the status quo and the citywide ban on storefront medicinal cannabis dispensaries. With the full ban, there are so many people that would lose jobs, lose their businesses, and lose their homes. It would further contribute to the bad shape to, that our, city economy, or our con, city's economy is in. Downtown Collective currently employs up to 20 people. It is a completely, a completely self-sustaining dispensary that provides good jobs in an area of the city where those are rare. The Coretz West and Limited Immunity Approach is a responsible public policy. It will protect and stabilize good union jobs, preserve safe access for patients, and enable responsible operators to continue operating a viable collective. Thank you for your time, and please support the Kretz Wesson motion. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Rosie Solis, and I'm a UFCW Local 77 member. I work as a patient consultant at Downtown Collective. I'm here today to urge you to support the Kretz Wesson motion. Their limited immunity approach to medical cannabis regulation and enforcement will bring order to this industry while preserving good jobs and safe access for patients. Medical cannabis is real medicine and valuable alternative to mass produced pharmaceuticals that carry their own risks and side effects. I lost my father to cancer. He was a medical marijuana cannabis user before he passed away. I remember him telling me during his last months in hospice, actually weeks, he needed something for his pain. He feared that heavy medication would leave him unable to talk to his six children. Medical cannabis was the best option for relief. The limited immunity approach to the Kretz West in motion protects and stabilizes the good union jobs for some cannabis operators provide. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, come on up. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Alex Martin, and I'm a USCW Local 770 member who works as a patient consultant at Cornerstone Research in Eagle Rock. I'm here today to urge this committee to support the Kretz West in motion. Their limited immunity approach is the most responsible way to protect and stabilize my job, preserve safe access for patients, and address neighborhood concerns. The gentle ban approach will be anything but for my coworkers and I who are threatened with the loss of our jobs and our livelihoods. Before arriving at Cornerstone, I spent seven years in the compliance department for City Smith Barney. Despite the $11 billion in profit Citigroup took home last year, I was laid off my position. The Kretz Wesson Limited Immunity Approach will protect good union jobs, safe access for patients, and allows responsible operators like Cornerstone to contribute toward a thriving small business community in Eagle Rock. Thank you for your time. I urge all members of this community to support the Kretz Wesson motion. Thank you. Okay, Sarah Armstrong and Sam Huey, H-U-M-E-I-D, I believe. Sarah Armstrong and then Sam. And then after him will be, I uh, believe it's Barry Kramer. Good afternoon. Okay. My name is Sarah Armstrong. I'm the Greater Los Angeles Collective Alliance Legal Liaison. I would like to point out that <clears throat> Although state law is problematic, many, many jurisdictions have successfully regulated. West Hollywood is the nearest to you, but Berkeley, Sebastopol, 
and Palm Springs have also done a good job. If you have a total ban, you unleash a veritable tsunami of litigation, which will not happen if you maintain the city stance, which has been the city stance for many years, which is that uh, the good actors get to remain. Um, this has all been litigated. On May 22nd, the appellate arguments were held. I believe that if you change your stance at this point and don't reserve a certain number of uh, organizations to remain open, you create a new legal situation, which brings just a wealth of litigation. Uh, additionally, we will be going around to every office today with a white paper that we've written and an offer to come and meet with any of you who would like to discuss this further. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Speaker. Honorable Mr. Members city, Ms. Uh, city Attorney, you, Mr. Chair, can I ask the City Attorney a question about litigation? Are we, um, we're scheduled under open session, correct? And then we also have an item for closed session? Yes. Okay. And just for the record, how many cases do we have right now that we've been sued on our current ordinance? Uh, 70, I think. Over 70 under our current ordinance? Think yeah, so. over. Oh, thanks. Give Honorable members of the Planning and Land Use Committee, my name is Sam Humid. I'm the operator of Perennial Holistic Wellness Center in Studio City and member of the Studio City Neighborhood Council Medical Marijuana Advisory Committee. Our committee and many others like ours have taken great strides in finding progressive solutions to an outrageous problem in LA. An outright ban will waste countless hours of diligent efforts put forth by many dedicated residents. As the operator of one of LA's oldest cannabis cooperatives, I've seen council members tout us as brave healthcare industry pioneers one year and villains the next. Councilman Weezer, I feel your pain. If I were a council member today, I would be hard pressed. Please address the committee. Sorry, I would be hard pressed to stand behind the cannabis industry in LA after so many post 2007 ICO dispensaries have pillaged and plundered while the city has been hamstrung to find sensible regulation. Uh, the, however, the Coretz Wesson motion offers solutions along for the best of both worlds. First, we will, patients will have access to dispensaries that have proven their merit, and second, the city council will have the power to quickly eliminate rogue operations held by nonprofit over patient care. Let's hold on, sir. I have a question. Sir. So, a point of clarification: you uh, suggested you were with, with what neighborhood council? The Studio City Neighborhood Council and Medical Marijuana Advisory Committee. Uh, have, has the neighborhood council itself officially taken a position on this particular issue as a whole body? No, it is uh, Ms. Harkin. Ms. Harkin is the no. Okay, that's. I just wanted the clarification. I wasn't sure. Okay. Okay. Um, no, I, I just want to know if you'd taken a position or not. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff Clark, Sam. I believe it's H-U-M-E-I-D. Okay, that was you. Okay. Then we have Barry Kramer. Come on up, Barry. Jeff Clark. Hi, I'm Jeff Clark of California LA Normal, and I'm also the California Clemency Project. I've heard a few things today that are, like, wrong. Uh, the first councilman up here that said it was getting out of control. Well, I really think we have too many cars and too much exhaust to breathe to that's kind of out of control. Way too many McDonald's, way too many liquor stores. And those are way out of control too. But, uh, you have 13 Studio C, 10 in Eagle Rock. How many drug stores and how many liquor stores are in those communities? I'm a Vietnam veteran. I use medical marijuana to keep me calm and you people are getting me upset because it's just ignorant. Um, you can't tax a medicine, for one. For two, if you ban anything, you're going to force it to the alleys. And at least these collectives and cooperatives are checking IDs and verifications where this city member says, well, put them back on the streets. Okay, we'll sell to your 16-year-old kid, and they ain't going to check for his ID. Okay? That's first thing. If you ban anything, you're putting it back in the alleys, and that's going to create everything bad. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Please close. Uh, Thank you. He said, who's our sir? Sir, thank you very much. There is no dispensaries, but our there is speaker. collectives, cooperatives, and associations. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. Good afternoon. My name is Barry Kramer. I'm a resident of Los Angeles and an operator of California Patients Alliance, a UFCW local 770 shop. I'm here to support the Coretz Wesson motion. Um, you have two motions in front of you, one a complete ban, this other one with some um, blocked out ways for the city to still keep control over medical marijuana. My main reason for supporting Coretz 
Wesson is that it does allow for compassion for patients. It takes care of law enforcement, allows them to um, enforce the, the ordinance that's coming up. It's really important that we keep some dispensaries open for medical marijuana patients who cannot grow. This is it's a simple matter of logistics. It takes three months to grow a, a crop. And even if it gets grown, there's no telling whether that is good medicine or not. These, you're, you're, you're handing this over to people. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Chris Wilkins will be our last speaker on items one and two. Good afternoon. Chris Wilkins on behalf of Council Member Coretz, Council District 5. I just wanted to walk through uh, our motion. The idea here is to implement what the city has tried to do several times, which is to have a very controlled, very limited availability of medical marijuana, but still provide for safe patient access. Uh, what we're asking to do is to adopt a ban, which would immediately allow the police to shut down those dispensaries that do not follow the rules but have a limited immunity for those small number of dispensaries that as far as location, hours, security, et cetera, do follow those rules that twice this council has affirmatively voted and tried to establish. I know it's exhausting. We're all incredibly tired. I'm tired of this issue. We're all tired of this issue. There's too many dispensaries in Council District 5. There's too many in every district. But all we're asking is that we take a reasonable approach of having a limited number instead of zero. One question for you from Council Member Reza. Actually, two quick questions um, since this office is the maker of the motion. One, was uh, Mr. Koretz one of the authors for the state law that we currently are, have on medical marijuana? Uh, he was one of the authors of the implementing law. It was a voter initiative that actually created the program. Okay, thank you. Number two, how is your proposal in this motion or your boss's proposal different from what we have already under our existing ordinance? Well, under our existing ordinance, we're basically stuck in this litigation loop until the end of time. Um, what we know from the courts is that this would allow us, uh, along the lines of some of our settlement discussions, to say we're going to have a ban, but there's going to be a select number that follows certain rules that we're going to use our discretion to not enforce against those. So that's the, the legal technical distinction. But basically, it's a way to implement our existing ordinance. Okay, well, it seems very similar to our existing ordinance. And secondly, it seems very similar to a settlement proposal that was made that the over 70 groups that have sued us did not want to abide by, so do not want to sign. It just seems like it's we're going down the same path. Please. Well, Excuse me, Terry Kaplan, the CS City Attorney's Office. Um, anything related to litigation, if you want to go into closed session, we have okay. that on the agenda, and we're happy to do that today. Right, thank that, you. That would be okay. part of item three as well. Right. Okay, so any other questions for the representative from Council Mayor Correns? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Okay. So, colleagues, we do have um, the option to go into closed session. Uh, to discuss some of the impacts that this uh, ordinance could have and or updates on the litigation to give us a, a, a broader perspective of, of the context of this discussion. I think the city attorney is advising that we do go into litigation if we're going to go in that direction. Would that be accurate? If you want to talk about, if the committee wants to talk about any litigation matters, we can do that in a closed session. Okay. So, colleagues? I don't need to. Um, I don't. I, I. I wouldn't. I have some questions, but I don't know if they're. Uh, I won't go to the legal side of it yet, then. So I don't think yeah. I need closed session on this. Okay, you don't want to go through. The, okay, so I, that's I fine. You have some statements and well, questions. Well, can I? Uh, on my motion, can I, Mr. Yeah. Dunnett? Okay. Thank you. Well, I too uh, believe in the use of medical marijuana. I do believe it has some medicinal value, and that patients should have the right to have access, and that's why when uh, we just had a so-called moratorium prior to 2007, I supported drafting an ordinance that would strike a balance between access and protecting communities that have no protections when dispensaries would just pluck up all over the place, all over the city. They were plucking up near schools, churches, where kids congregate. So we need to strike that balance. 
And I think we found that in our ordinance, uh, unfortunately, because of the uh, patch case, I think it is, uh, that called Long Beach's ordinance into question that is very similar to ours. We found that ours may be unconstitutional, so we had to do something so that in in area where we have no laws, we wouldn't want the same thing to happen prior to 2007, where we had no laws and these dispensaries were plucking up all over the city. Uh, in looking into that, um, my view on medical marijuana has since changed. Uh, I don't think that anywhere in the state law do we allow for the types of dispensaries that are coming up all over the city, the type of sales that occur that are outright prohibited by state law. We have a model in our dispensary model that, um, given the Mench case as well, they can no longer be the primary caregivers, and so we are allowing for something to exist that isn't even permitted under state law. My view is that no matter what we do here, no matter where we go, no matter what type of ordinance we draft up, as long as we continue supporting the dispensary model, we will be in conflict with state law, we'll never see the end to this in litigation. The best thing to do at this time is for the city to uh, repeal our existing ordinance. It's unconstitutional, in my opinion. And secondly, ban them until we get further direction for the Supreme Court. The California Supreme Court will take anywhere between one and two years to review a number of cases that will review this and clarify for all municipalities about what we can and cannot do. Uh, and in that scenario, it's going to tell us whether even a ban is allowable or not. It's going to tell us whether, uh, you know, some of our ordinance can continue to move forward or not. But uh, at this time, I think the safest thing to do, because we see that this is still getting un uh, out of control, our police department is strapped, our building and safety department is strapped from doing anything because they don't know what to enforce, if anything. When a dispensary comes up in our neighborhoods, we as a council office attempt to respond and call a number of departments, call the city attorney's office, and these things take forever to uh, get some attention to it when it's pretty obvious that uh, we are, um, when uh, young people and others are getting access to, access so, easy, so easy access to it. Now, I think in the long term, other than just looking to see what the state Supreme Court does, the state law needs to be fixed as well. Uh, we, as you know, it's practically anyone can get a recommendation. You know, if we want to legalize marijuana, so be it. But until we legalize marijuana, we have a situation where we are not given the tools necessary to control for the ill effects in local neighborhoods by allowing these types of dispensaries to exist. In Oregon, for example, they have a state law that you have a very limited number of illnesses and you could only get a recommendation from a primary care doctor and your primary care doctor and that way the patients who truly need it are, have access. Uh, one of the questions I get under the, my proposed motion is well how will patients have access? Under state law patients can grow their own or the primary caregiver can provide it for them. Under state law, I believe you could also get a collective of three people or their primary caregivers. So, uh, so uh, three people can get together. That is the law. I mean, that's a state law. And we can't do anything but follow state law. If we do anything but that, we'll continue to just run around, get all these lawsuits. Um, at the end of the day, the ban reflects what the state law provides. If we don't like the state law, let's change the state law. But I don't think the city should continue under its current status quo where these dispensaries pop up all over the place and we're ill-equipped to shut them down if we so choose. Um, and I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, before we go to, to my colleague, Councilman England, there are two speakers that were put in the wrong stack. I had them on the general comment, but they three item number one, and they wanted to address it under a general comment uh, category. If I don't mind, Councilmember, if I can just call them up, because they did fill out a card. That was Sarah Levering, Levering and Susan Soares. Hi, thank you. My name is Sarah Levering. I'm a Venice resident, and I work for the Marijuana Policy Project. 
I'm here today to speak in support of sensible regulations for medical marijuana dispensaries. I think it's ludicrous to talk about medical marijuana dispensaries being out of control and then to conclude that therefore it's logical to just push all medical marijuana transactions to the black market where product safety cannot be effectively regulated, unethical vendors can't be held accountable through civilized means. Yes, California's lack of state-level regulations is problematic, but I don't think that a ban will help that situation. The Marijuana Policy Project is working in tandem with several other organizations to support the passage of AB 2312, which will implement much-needed state-level regulations. So I am here to ask you to please be patient for the passage of that law, and in the meantime, please allow responsible dispensaries who are playing by the rules to continue to operate and serve medical marijuana patients. Thanks. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Where do the dispensaries get their medical marijuana? From a variety of sources, from a patients. Black market being one of them? It's the unanswered question. I haven't gotten one answer to that. No you know what, I don't work at a dispensary, so I couldn't answer the question for you, but I can tell you that with a better system of state-level regulations, we won't have to be wondering about that, and we can, we can have licensed growers. Thank you. Next speaker. How long have you guys been trying to figure out medical marijuana? Who's been advising you through all those lost years? Your attorney declared war on medical marijuana a long time ago. You're being led by a man that thinks he knows better than, than his constituents and is willing to put the city in harm's way to get his way. Why are you still listening to him? Now the city's trying to avoid 70 lawsuits. Who says those lawsuits go away just because the ordinance has changed? Whose idea is, was it to ignore the voters in California? Who decided to eradicate medical marijuana and put way too many city assets on the line while we're bleeding $27,000 an hour more than we bring in? Los Angeles should be the most amazing city in the country. We are the taste makers, the influencers. Our country overwhelmingly supports medical marijuana. Prop 215 is the law. Stop taking bad advice, take the lead, provide safe access of marijuana for patients. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. that closes by the cotton. Please. Thank you. Um, I have a lot of comments to make and observations and um, really been looking at this issue from a different perspective and trying to keep an open eye to the benefits as well as the liabilities, what it does for folks that uh, uh, suggest they need it. I'm not an expert. Um, in fact, I was going to ask one of the experts, I'm sure there's a few claimed experts in the room that might know the side effects of marijuana. Uh, I know it's not part of the discussion. Uh, but I wanted to find out that information, so maybe somebody can send me that information. On another note, and I'll get into why in a moment, um, I, I do want to thank, actually, uh, our city attorney's office. Somebody just made a comment that they're not doing justice for the city, uh, particularly Jane Usher, who's here in the front row, who's worked tirelessly on this, trying to work on with both sides and trying to find some common ground. Uh, we're looking at 70-plus lawsuits, so the threat of litigation is sort of silly to say, well, if you don't do this or you don't do that, we're going to get sued. We're being sued. We're going to get sued either way. Um, and that's sad because I think there's some folks who've been trying to do the right thing. In fact, somebody had mentioned some st it's, it's really wrong for us to have a complete ban for a few bad apples. I couldn't agree more. But they're not a few bad apples. In fact, there may be only a, good, a few good apples, and maybe it's only the ones that showed up today. But all the other ones out there haven't been. And I can attest to that. And why? Because I've been to many of these facilities. Why? Because I've closed them. I've raided them. I'm also an LAPD officer. I was on the last raid in my district where we found assault weapons, where we found other drugs. Um, this was a small storefront facility. This was the last one. We had 60 of these in CD12, 60, 60 of these storefront facilities. Uh, and they were let, selling to everybody. They didn't care about really an ID card. They, didn't, they just wanted the cash, and they were selling to kids. Somebody had mentioned, well, it's going to go into the black market. This has become the black market in storefronts. That's what's happened. When p folks have said this is, going to get, this is going to get out of control if we don't allow this, it became out of control. I don't know the side effects to marijuana, but I can tell you the side effects to having the storefronts in my district. And I'll just read you the small list so you're aware. They're pump these are the ones from the official police documents 
public drunkenness, theft, assault, vandalism, burglary, battery, attempted murder, murder, robbery, public defecation, graffiti, loitering, drug sales, meth, cocaine, and other drugs, attempted rape, domestic violence, identity theft, weapons, and assault weapons. These were all on the police reports after the raids, during the raids, um, around the facilities, and inside the facilities. These were the, th the arrests that were made. And the one, the last one that we closed on January 30th, 2012, at my district, uh, this was a small one. And it was determined that this facility was making approximately $600,000 in cash a year. We had 60 of these just in, again, the Northwest Valley. That's $36 million a year. The law says in California in 1996 that was passed for the Compassionate Use Act that the intention was for dispensaries to operate as nonprofit collectives that would help sick patients share resources and access to medical marijuana. Okay. But that's, in reality, it's just not what we've yet to experience in the whole. I'm not saying everybody. But for the ones that have really brought this to the forefront, a lot of folks want to look at the city council. A lot of folks have pointed out to Mr. Huizar for being a leader on this and saying, how dare you not have any compassion for these folks who are sick? That's not what is happening here. It's not this body you should be upset at, quite frankly. And it's not the ones who want to put in the ban that you should be upset at. It's those ones that are out there the majority, not the minority, the majority of these, and I'm telling you this because you, and you all know it, the majority of these out there have given you a bad name. Why? Because of all the lists of the things that I've said, I've read off, that are ruining communities. That are, you, you wouldn't want to live or work next to one of these. And I'm not saying one of these facilities that, that you go to or you frequent or you operate, but the ones that have these problems, which again are the majority. Um, it has gotten out of control. If that list I've read off doesn't tell you that that's out of control, I don't know what does. And so I really strongly believe that somewhere down the road there's some way to work something out that might make sense. But right now it doesn't make sense to try to have a knee-jerk reaction or band-aid solution to temporarily fix some of them when this problem isn't going away. We've got to solve this, and unfortunately, it's not even up to us to solve. It's too late. The ship has sailed. This is up to the courts. And so we've got to send a message to the courts that we don't want to find a middle ground because we tried that. We need the courts to figure out what's allowable and what's not, what falls under the laws of the state of California, and by the way, federal law, which is why we were able to shut these down by federal law, not state law. In fact, it was our LAPD, your Los Angeles police officers, that had to spend countless hours on these to close the ones down, not working, quite frankly, against or with city or state law, but working with the feds and the DA on federal laws to close these down, uh, which took a lot of resources and a lot of your money, quite frankly, to do these. So um, I, I don't know that it's time for people to be upset or applause. I think this is a, a momentary time to say we need to send a message to the courts that what this body tried to do, this council tried to do, didn't work. And they tried. And I think you ought to thank those people who stepped up to try to do something. And But it was the others that those bad apples, the majority of those that ruined it for now until this is worked out in the court system. Um, and that's why I'm supporting uh, the Huizar motion. Uh, I will not support uh, the Koretz motion. I think it's the wrong thing to do because of what has led up to where we're at now. Not by what politics have done, um, but what all those folks out there have done. People have gotten hurt. People have gotten killed. Women have been raped. People have been burglarized. I'm not making this up or trying to dramatize it. The public, the police reports are public record. It's time to say, this has not been worked out at all, and it is out of control. Um, and so until we have controls and regulations in place, we can't just go about it with knee-jerk reaction solutions. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you from my perspective and where I'm at and why I'm there. Um, but I, I do thank you all for coming, and I know you're going to continue in these discussions 
Uh, we still have another committee that this is agendized for as well uh, before it comes to the full city council. So thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Um, from my point of view, I think this is one step of many steps that still will happen, uh, but we have to take it one at a time. Uh, for the past five or six years, we tried our best to work with very vague state law, inconsistent with federal law. We tried our best to lay out a strategy with our planning police powers, and all of that ended up blowing up in our face. All of that meant, and I'll be very clear about this, in my district, I have my deputies who work in the community, and every one of my deputies highly recommended that we support the ban because of the articulation of both my colleagues of what's happening in the street. I have kids dying, kids being abused, shops opening up near schools. It is a very punitive environment. And the gangs, the black market is getting away with it. Uh, we have an inconsistency at the federal level, it does not work with the state level. That makes it hard for municipalities to be clear as to how you can enforce and control for the sake of the patient. I went down that road at the beginning because of the patient. I saw them, I visited with them, I went to the first dispensaries that were focused on doing what was best for the patient. And it is very, very frustrating to see how the greedy, the callous, the manipulative took every opportunity to abuse the process for profit. It had nothing to do for health and the service for those who are dying of cancer, of AIDS, and the whole list goes on. And that to me is heartbreaking because I know this committee worked really hard to address the needs of the patient and because of these inconsistencies we have yet to achieve that goal. So I see the frustration of my colleagues here. I know what they're going through in their districts and I can tell you the level of angst on that parent who has their kids shot because gang members came in and raided that establishment. It is a very, very, very difficult place to be. So from that point of view, until we get the federal government to understand and the state what it's doing to our children and how it's punishing our patients, we are moving at a very methodical pace, given what the courts allows us to understand, given their readings, interpretations of the law. And those have been our constraints. And so, um, on items one and two, we can vote and file, and that could be the recommendation of this committee, and it can move forward on that basis, or if you have other options, it's up to the body. Councilman? I mean, well, you may want to take action on each of them separately. The Mr. Item? Item. Okay, so item one, I would recommend we note and file. Yes. Is there an action on the second on that? Okay. And um, I, I do have a question. I um, so it would go to council item number one if it passes as a note and file, since there's been a motion in a second. Well, it goes. It Public, excuse me, Councilman, it actually goes to public safety. Public safety, okay. But it moves on, it doesn't end here, it doesn't note and file here. Because there, uh, there were, although I, I disagree with that motion, there was some discussion by the full council that they would like to see both motions right. before them. So it, it goes forward. Public safety, okay. Well, if you discuss it, I believe it's a note and file. If you don't discuss it in committee, it's a receive and file. Okay. So, yeah, on the uh, item number one, the, your your motion is to note and file. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Okay. Englander seconded that, and yes. I, I'll I'll vote yes on note and filing item number one. Okay. Item number two. Um, excuse me, Terry Kaufman, the CS City Attorney's Office. Um, item two c comes to you in in two ways. One was the City Planning Commission action, which was a un unanimous vote to support. Um, the um, the the uh, gentle ban under um, Councilmember Huizar's motion. 
um, but there was a a um, a correction, a, type of, um, a typographical correction in, I think it was um, section 3A, um, adding the words process or, and that ordinance we transmitted under a separate city attorney report. So um, if the committee is going to recommend approval, that's the ordinance that should be recommended. Okay. And a question on that, just for clarification, was this the previous, the May 24th planning? Commission meeting? It, it, the, the May 24th Planning Commission brought forth a, a recommendation on an ordinance, and then on the 25th, we transmitted an ordinance that just made that typographical <laughs> correction. And, the, and, the, and this was the Citywide Planning Commission, and they voted it, unanimously? It, yes. Okay. So this just is, is a, cor a correction to that. Charlie Roush, Planning Department staff. It's a correction of the action of the Planning Commission. It's not a substantial change in it, so that remains a eight-vote item on the council. Right. Okay. Thank you. So the recommendation item number two. My, my recommendation would be to approve uh, the Planning Commission recommendation as well with the change uh, of the typographical error um, and forward that on to uh, the next committee. I would, I would second that. Yes. And thank you, uh, Mr. Englander, for seconding our motion, uh, our original motion on that. Okay, so that takes us to number two. And item three, since we're not going to go into discussion, we can just move on. And um, right. any technical term for item three? I just. That's only if you chose to go into closed session. Okay, so, so they will, will not be going to closed okay. session. No, but Mr. Chair, if I could um, sure. this time just thank the city attorney's office who I think is acting as the attorney for the council and trying to balance all the different ideas and interests and issues. And I think they're waiting to hear from direction from the council and they're working with all of us to get what um, different council members would like to see in, in an ever-evolving <laughs> legal world with medical marijuana. So Jay Nusher and all the city attorney's office, I think, have been doing a, a great job trying to corral all of this in to get to some place. So thank you. Right. I just wanted to echo that and again thank you. I know we are under a lot of duress with our budget issues and to stay focused on this truly is uh, a, a woman's job in terms of getting us to this point. So thank you very much. So that's just, that's just about items one, two, three, and um, four we already handled. Anybody here for general comments? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned.